Howdy folks. Good morning. It is Wednesday, October 27th, 2021. Right now, you may be noticing that there's a bit more civilization in this video. But rest assured, though, I'm still in a park, more or less. I'm actually located at the Gilchrist Park near Puna Gorda. Uh, well, we're practically in the historical district of the town. And honestly, I actually really enjoy visiting Puna Gorda whenever I have a chance. I feel like every time I come here, there's always something new to discover, whether it be a park, a restaurant, or any other form of attraction. It just has a very old-fashioned feel to it, and actually in a moment you'll see why. So noticeably as I was walking up, I noticed this prominent monument that dedicates to a well-known individual, especially in this part of Florida. Can you guess his name before I get up to the sign? Real quick. Give you a second to guess. In a moment we'll look at some fountains. If you thought that his name was Ponce de Leon, you'd be correct. Now, what's neat about Ponce de Leon is the fact that he was one of the first well-known conquistador coming from Spain. Basically, conquistador translates to conqueror. So he was someone who sought after whether, whether it be power or prestige. Now, with that being said, he was actually brought over to the Americas during Christopher Columbus's second expedition, which was around uh, 1513, I believe. And they actually landed in what is now known as Puerto Rico. And actually, for the longest time, he was actually the governor of that island. How ironic, now it's actually part of U.S. territory. When back in the 1500s, it was Spanish territory. Now, what's neat about Mr. Ponce de Leon was he was contracted to actually explore some new lands off of Puerto Rico. This was during the spring of 1513. And during his travels of conquering, he actually stumbled upon a piece of land that was further east of where he was staying. And you figure this was around Easter time or so. And with that being said, you know, oftentimes Easter is highly associated with flowers. And so when he saw like the richness of the flora in the area, he decided to call this patch of land called La Florida. Now, what's neat is with the rough translation of Florida, it actually means flower in Spanish. Now, reason that I really know about some of these Spanish translations was last year, prior to the pandemic hitting, I was actually in Costa Rica for a time, studying abroad. And that really provided me an opportunity to help understand more of the Spanish language. But going back to the point that I was making is, he named it La Florida, and his well-known first landing point was at St. Augustine. That's on the east coast of Florida, sort of like in the northeast portion of the state, bordering with the Atlantic Ocean. That's actually still on my bucket list, by the way, since that was technically one of the first established settlements from the Spanish in the state. Now, eventually, throughout the year of 1513, he wanted to explore more of the land, the perimeter. 
And as a matter of fact, one of his first other established areas was actually here in Punta Gorda. He entered into the Charlotte Harbor and he realized the value of this place. Because you figure back then, fish were much more abundant. There's plenty of opportunity to raise new wealth and start a colony. However, though, he faced conflict because of the Calusa Indians at the time. They didn't really like any new Europeans coming into their lands. And you have to figure, you know, back then, they had to deal with more hostility. So, in a sense, he left the area for a time, because I'm sure he had to return to Puerto Rico and Spain. But then it was in 1521 when he actually came back to Charlotte Harbor. And this time he wanted to actually try establishing a colony with a number of about 200 people, horses, mules, and other supplies. But then it was really that time when the Calusa Indians were very angry. And actually, as a matter of fact, the Calusa won this battle in 1521. And it actually caused Ponce de Leon to get punctured by an arrow that actually had a bit of poison in it. So in a sense, he was banished from here by the Calusa. And he, tried, he went back to Cuba. That's where he landed for a time. And he died of his wounds there. But that's why Puna Gorda has such a rich history because this was essentially one of the first established colonies of the Spanish at the time. But I still consider St. Augustine to be the very first. I kind of think of Puna Gorda as the second. I think in my opinion, Ponce de Leon was a little less cruel than uh, Christopher Columbus. But then, I could be wrong. He could have been just as cruel. Who knows? But that's why, like, whenever it's Columbus Day or something, I don't celebrate that aspect. I, want, I focus more upon the indigenous peoples instead. But yeah, you guys... And you just really have an excellent view of the Charlotte Haba. While we're visiting, you guys, it's all right. Hope you learned something of value today regarding a bit of a cultural history lesson that's happened here. It's all right, you guys. Enjoy your wacky Wednesday, and journey on a journey is outwards. Take care, folks. See ya.